She just made history as the first Native American to be nominated for an Academy Award for, drumroll please, Best Actress. Lily Gladstone, good morning and welcome back. Good morning. Because, Tony, we could say we knew her win, Tony. And you were not a Golden Globe winner. Yes. And not a nominee. And, and on your way. And you week. haven't forgotten about us. So, listen, we're going to take you back to that moment when you were you were FaceTiming your parents. Yeah. Uh, which was really very nice. FaceTiming your parents and you get the news that you're an Oscar nominee. Let's see that and then you can tell us what was going on there, what you all were thinking at that moment. Yeah, I, um... Oh, we don't have that. Okay, sorry. We don't have that, no. <laughs> Paint the picture for us, Lily. Paint Act it out for us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Act it out. Go well, ahead. it was sweet. I was, um, I was... I'd FaceTime my folks. You know, we were watching all of the categories. You know, we were cheering Where were some, you? And Where were they? I was actually in Osage County. Uh -huh. I felt like because so many milestones through all of this and the whole project, it's, you know, really belongs to Osage Nation. This is their story. So it felt really special to be able to be there when the okay. announcement came in. And where were mom and dad? Mom and dad are at home north of Seattle. Okay. So I was FaceTiming with them, and um, it was funny, a few categories beforehand, you know, mom had the phone flipped and was filming the TV, and, like, it's through her phone, so I can see kind of some white lines, <laughs> yeah. not anything. Yes. I'm like, mom, I don't want to watch that, you know? Yes. I went to, um, you know, years ago, 2017, the eclipse. We were all trying to film the eclipse, but I realized <laughs> what the, the memory was was like my grandma was reacting to it, so uh -huh. I uh -huh. the camera on my grandma, and I was like, no, I want to see you and dad's faces. I don't, uh -huh. I don't want to learn by kind of not being able to yes. read it. I want yeah. to see your reactions. So it was great. Um, I, and sure, sure enough, I could barely hear my name, but I just saw my mom starting to fist pump in the air, and my dad doing, I guess, what my grandma Lily always used to do, just clasping his hands together. Oh, and going my like grandma's that. name is Lily, too. My great-grandma, yeah. What is this like for you, though, Lily? Listen, I know this is very exciting. I get all that, but is there a part of you that the inside, because you're always so calm, so cool, so poised. <laughs> is there a part of you that's screaming on the inside, like, I can't believe this is happening to me? Because oh, you're sure. winning, every, winning everything so far. Um, I mean, like I, I was visiting with you a little before, it feels a little bit like inside out. It's oh. all of the little feelings. It's all the little emotions. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yes. and you know, they're, they're talking with each other, they're reacting to each other. Some are louder <laughs> than others at any given point, and then they pass the baton. So it's just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a whole rainbow of emotion on yeah. the inside. Well, no offense to 17 and 18-year-olds, but the wisdom of high school graduating classes is usually <laughs> limited. But in, yeah. in your case... Not at all. They voted. Brilliant. They voted, and you were voted most likely to win an Oscar. I love that story. Yep, yep. That's pretty amazing. We have a picture, actually. Yeah, you look and, at you. Uh, look at you. And Josh, Josh Ryder. Josh Ryder, who yep. is currently a restaurant owner, mm -hmm. not an Oscar nominee. So they got you... Not yet. 50% is right so far. The time is coming, Josh. What's it like to look back on a photo like that and, a, and an accolade like that and have it almost, <laughs> you know, you're, you're on your way? Yeah, and did you dream of that? yourself back then you know my dad did when I was little he it's in a way that it's almost teasing you but also encouraging you and what you love to do um he'd always kind of drop that word in, uh, uh, when yeah in his little pep talks he'd always kind of just drop that idea in my head since I was maybe eight or nine and started uh. doing doing theater um but yeah, it's it's been really it's been really heartwarming to see how that photo recirculating from high school has kind of rebrought our our drama class back together. Like That's my, amazing. Yeah, they're they they're, they're going to watch the Oscars from our old high school theater in my graduating class and a lot of people that I did drama with. So okay, that's I have to great. imagine you're hearing from people from the past now. What mm -hmm. about offers maybe that weren't on the table before? Have you started, has that buzz that we're talking about created more? Oh yeah, and soon enough we'll have some exciting announcements to make, but <laughs> there's there's stuff cooking. You can do it today yeah. if you like. We, we, we're very <laughs> friendly people, Lily. I don't know, I see my manager Which like, no. Which no, yeah, <laughs> do not say it. No, no. What, no. I'll ask you reaction though, community, you mentioned the yes. high school group getting mm -hmm. together, but what about the Osage community? You were there <sighs> that day, what was that like? I mean, I, I wasn't there um, obviously because I was at the Globe but are you talking about that reaction? Or oh, the... For the Oscars when you were there? Um, I mean, the both. And what it means yeah. to them to see you in this position. You know, what it means to them is, is what I care about most. And that was probably the most touching thing was watching the reaction when the Globes were announced because Osage got together and had a watch party. And there were a lot of the community there. And, you know, each time I know a category that we were in came up, everybody was really excited and then, like, get deflated if we didn't win it. So by the time it came around to me, or late in the night, 
like one of my friends was telling me, everybody was like a little bit tired of getting excited and then not <laughs> having the, the moment. But then if you watch it, you know, it went a little viral on, on uh, Twitter. What are Twitter. the people saying to you, though? They yeah. must be just so, so excited, yeah. so proud. I mean, Yancey Redcorn, who plays Chief Bonacastle in it, he's um, he said several times how watching it, and this is the highest praise. And, you know, I've, I've heard similar from Margie Burkhart, Molly's, Molly's granddaughter, yeah. that it felt like what it may have been. You know, it's I, it, Molly to them felt like their grandmothers. Yeah. And um, that generation that they've, you know, maybe remember from early childhood or have definitely grown up hearing about. We are all so excited for you, Lily. You know this. But yeah. were you as surprised as most of us were when Leo wasn't nominated for Best Actor? Yeah. Because the two of you were in tandem in that role yeah. off of each other, I thought. I mean, he really was the shadow to the light that was Molly, you know, and I, I really don't feel, you know, he gave me a character that was so easy to believe, so easy to fall in love with, so easy to not see what this the sinister side yes. of him was doing. And that that was the thing I was most nervous about is like, you know, is, is Molly gonna be fully formed and have the dignity to really not see what's going on? And mm -hmm. that came from everything yeah. that yes. he did. Yeah. So. I know he's cheering you on, too. I know he you've said that many, many times. Can't wait to see you on the Oscar red carpet, yep. what you're going to wear, who you're going to bring. Your mom was at the Golden Globes. Mm -hmm. You decided on a plus one? Mom's I'm free that day, again. March 10th. <laughs> hey. I'm wide you know, open. Mom, really. if mom's not feeling it, I'll call you Gail. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Really glad, Sony. Thank, Thank you, Thank you so for much. coming back to us. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. Killers of the Flower Moon is playing in select theaters. And guess what? It's streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. But if you can, see it on the big screen. Yes, no doubt. Our next guest has been, she's good at numbers too, I'll bet. Our next guest has been described as a beating heart of one of this year's most highly rated movies. Have you seen it yet? Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon. It tells a true story. And this is the thing. This is a true story. The manipulation and murders of members of the Osage Native American tribe in the early 1920s over their oil-rich land. Her name is Lily Gladstone. Remember this, she plays Molly Burkhart, the wealthy wife of Leonardo DiCaprio character. His name is Ernest. He's a war veteran who takes part in the murders. And in this clip, Molly learns yet another of her loved ones has died a mysterious death. Gladstone's work as Molly has received rave reviews and is getting major, major Oscar buzz. Killers of the Flower Moon is distributed by Paramount Pictures, part of CBS Parent Company. And we are very happy to say that Lily Gladstone is here in the studio. Hi, Lily. Hi, Gail. All I can say about this is Lily's going to the Oscars. Lily's going to the Oscars. <laughs> Lily's going to the Oscars. And I can't wait. Golden Globes, too. So what are you thinking about this? How are you processing all of this? You were, you're an actress, of course. You're working with Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio, and people are talking about you in this movie. I want to know what you're feeling, what you're thinking. I'm just grateful that if I'm getting attention, I know it's because people care about Molly. Yes. I mean, like you said, the beating heart of the film that is about these murders. Mm -hmm. And this story has been done before. Jimmy Stewart was in the FBI story, which was mm -hmm. um, funded by the FBI and it focused on the FBI. And this case was the formation of the FBI as we know it. So historically it's very relevant, but you know, the fact that we care about Molly so much, we care about her sisters, her family, her nation, that just tells me audiences are drawn to where we were hoping. How did we you care about that, but I care about you working with the two of them and what that means to you at this point in your career, because at one point you were frustrated with your career thinking, maybe is this yeah. the right thing for me to do? Should I continue doing this? Mm. That's what I want to do. And we were, I read that you might be, you might actually take a data analytics course. <laughs> right. yeah. Very different life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was I was great at math when I was a kid. Not like the little boy that we just saw, but <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was, um, I, you know, I was, I was encouraged by my math teacher in high school and you know, I liked, I kind of liked there was a bit of a storytelling element to it, all of that. But yeah, I think a lot of actors feel the same way at some point in their career. And especially being a Native woman, I'm, I'm selective about the roles that I want to do. Mm -hmm. So the ones that I'm able to do, and plus the ones I think I'm well suited for, don't come by that often. Once every year, every couple of years mm -hmm. was the pattern. And this was also coming out of COVID. Yeah. as a caretaker for my grandmother late in her life. And, you know, my just spending time with my parents through quarantine, all of it. I was terrified of bringing something home to them. Data analytics and studying, really, I live in northern Washington. Well, now this you're is where on the, the Murder Hornet. The Pacific is, Northwest. Right. Um, I'm always fascinated 
by how a role can impact someone. Mm -hmm. And you've said that this role has changed you, not as someone who is a performer, but as a human. How did it change you? I feel like when you're telling stories like this that are about human suffering, but also human resilience, um, that was something that we really tried to focus on that I think has moved me so much. Mm. And I mean, just sheerly, I, I came in as an outsider. I'm Blackfeet and as Purse, but I'm not Osage. We all have somewhat similar histories in regards to, you know, federal policy and, you know, this, but the reign of terror is very specifically Osage. So, you know, I came in with, you know, wanting to handle it the way I would expect somebody to come in and tell a story about my great grandmother. And now I have a whole other community, you know. It's mm. Some of the people that I love most in this world are Osage that I met during this process that let me into their family, their lives, their stories, their mm. history. And, you know, it's, it's part of doing a project like this. Molly, and most of us cut didn't and know run. this story. Right. Most of us didn't even know this story. That's why I'm so grateful for the movie, mm -hmm. because I learned so much. And what does this mean to you now putting it out in the world for people to know this? I think it's a wonderful opportunity for people to see natives in a way that we haven't. You know, it is 100 years ago, but really it's a modern story. It's yeah. like you see these oh, images yeah. that are really exciting, like native people driving around in Rolls Royces. You know, it's um, so it changes our image to something that's more real in that way. But also it it shows people that we're still here. Yeah. You know, ending the film, ending this this little glimpse into one nation, because we all have, all of our tribal nations have some big adversity, some big attempt to eradicate us. Of yeah. Pain. And yet we're still yeah. here. We continue forward together. And, you are um, still here. And yeah. I'm so glad you're telling this story. Do you want to go to the Oscars, Lily Gladstone? Oh, sure. <laughs> Gail, she's not going to take you. No, no, I know she's not taking me. I, I, I think she, her parents will probably trump me, but I'm very happy for you. Yeah, we all are. Thank yeah, you. We Thank are cheering us. you on because I know you're going to the Oscars. And by the way, you're going to the Golden Globes too. <laughs> cheering you on, Lily Gladstone. We all are, yes. On the vast prairie lands of Oklahoma's Osage Nation, a reckoning is underway. Anna, Rita, here's Minnie. Resurrecting survival stories. And there's Molly. That live in descendants like Margie Burkhart. I have lived with the reign of terror all my life, ever since I was too young to remember. My mother and my father would be sitting at the kitchen table. They talked about all the other Osage murders, how Ernest deceived Molly. Deception, greed, and racism. You want to go to Washington, D.C.? This may be the last thing I do in a tale brought to the big screen, Children. with Margie's grandmother and grandfather portrayed by Leonardo DiCaprio and Lily Gladstone taking center stage. Oh, I love you. And kill these men who killed my family. Molly Burkhart survived a murderous plot by her husband, Ernest, in a scheme to inherit oil and gas rights on her property. The alleged mastermind, his uncle, William K. Hale, as portrayed in the film by Robert De Niro. These women died with how Osage suffered from illness. You have to make it the head rights come to you. Greed was what drove all of these murders. William Hale, he was one of the richest men in Osage County. He didn't need any more money. Here you see Anna. She was the first, the first one that got murdered. Hale was rumored to be behind several murders, but only convicted in the case of Henry Roan. His murder led the FBI to find the killers and prosecute those that ordered the killing and actually did the killing. Jim Gray is Roan's great-grandson and a former Osage tribal chief. Just to go to trial, he says, required a decision by the U.S. Supreme Court. The U.S. attorneys had to fight very hard. At the time, they did not think it was possible that a all-white jury would convict a white man for killing an Indian. But this case was just the tip of the iceberg. 24 deaths were under investigation. I'm sorry for all troubles. People's homes were being blown up. People were taken out in the country getting shot. They were poisoned. Cars were getting driven off the road. The systematic murder of Osage men, women, even children, was made profitable by the policy of guardianship. 
A 1906 federal act effectively declared the Osage incompetent to manage their own affairs, placing them and their assets, including their land and oil rights, in the custody of white overseers. Federal policies worked in concert with very bad people to produce the biggest massive transfer of land from indigenous hands to non-indigenous hands. The irony? The Osage bought millions of acres of what they believed was undesirable land in Oklahoma after being pushed off their territory in farm-rich Kansas. A collision with Western expansion, the industrialization of the country, World War I, the main ingredient was oil, and it was found on our reservation. In 1923 alone, the tribe earned $30 million from its oil and gas production, about $400 million today. Per capita, it made the Osage the richest nation in the world. A story like this is about one of the worst racial injustices and more monstrous crimes in American history. David Grant authored the book Killers of the Flower Moon. The fact that you have someone like J. Edgar Hoover who fit into this narrative. Yes. He really didn't want to look into this case. He didn't? No. Because these crimes were taking place there, it fell to their jurisdiction. But they completely bungle it, and they can't solve the case for years. I still have a fair amount of the Killers of the Flower Moon documents oh, wow. around here. Gran uncovered something eyes. deeper, an exponentially higher than average Osage mortality rate. You had doctors who were administering poisons. You had morticians who would be covering up bullet wounds. You had lawmen who were on the take. And you had many others who were complicit in their silence because they were all getting wealthy from these crimes, from this criminal enterprise. So this is the Tall Chief Theater, and inside here is the only memorial to the Reign of Terror victims. Dennis McAuliffe, a retired Washington Post reporter, that would be Sybil's grandfather, and wrote about the murder doctor. some 30 years ago in a book dedicated to his grandmother called The Deaths of Sybil Bolton. Her official cause of death was gunshot wound suicide. Started hearing different versions of her death, some things looked a little fishy. He says she was yet another victim of the reign of terror. Following her death, his grandfather fled the area with his mother in tow. So he raised my mother to never say anything about the Osage. She was made to feel uh, ashamed of her Indian heritage. So much so, he says, she suppressed his Native American identity. I'm finally honest with myself, and I finally erased the lies that were present in my family growing up. A blessing Margie Burkhardt wishes her father had known. He was my main concern on all of this, just because the way he was treated, and I think this kind of would help maybe, uh, I don't know, reconcile his feelings or validate his feelings or try to make things right. Please send help. There's murder in Osage and the police do nothing. We should never forget this story. We should be talking about this for years to come. And that's one of my concerns. After this movie is over in two or three or four years from now, are people going to forget? Um, hopefully they won't. Hopefully they do. For so long, the Osage did not speak of this, 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 this absolute tragedy in their history, and, and now they're speaking more about it. Think about it. The first murder, her great aunt, mm -hmm. happened three days before the Tulsa massacre, the race oh. riots in Tulsa with African Americans. People say there were people that were rescued from Tulsa in Osage County country. So when you think about what was taking place at that time, the, the Osage are like, we have we are a nation of survivors. There's so much more that we want people to know about us. And hopefully I'll have a chance to tell that part of the story well, in the coming months. Well, this part was amazing. Absolutely amazing, Michelle.